Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, October 27th, 2019. For those who have been following us, we are still in Unit 2, Unit 2 of the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. Our lesson from that quarterly, Lesson 9, is entitled Extravagant Love. Extravagant Love, our devotional reading, is taken from John chapter 13, verses 3 to 11. Our background scripture, Luke 7, verses 36 to 50. And our printed or lesson text is taken from Luke 7, verses 37 to 48. Lesson aims from the quarterly are, number one, examine how the sinful woman demonstrated her love and gratitude to Jesus. Number two, reflect on the love and devotion the woman must have felt to cross social barriers to anoint Jesus. Number three, become emboldened to resist any social pressures that would prevent expression of love and gratitude for one's salvation. The lesson has three major divisions. The lesson outline has three major divisions after the introduction. The first is extravagant love express. That's covered between Luke chapter 7 verses 37 and 38. The second is extravagant love defended. That's covered between verses 39 and 46. Uh, And the third is extravagant love rewarded. That's covered between chapter 7 verses 47 and and 48. From the standard commentary, the lesson title is Grateful Faith. Grateful Faith. And additional aims are, number one, summarize the account of Jesus' anointing by the woman of Luke 7. Number two, contrast the grateful behavior of the admittedly sinful woman with the ingratitude of the self-righteous Pharisee. And number three, suggest a specific action he or she, that's me or you, can take in the coming week to display gratitude for forgiveness. Now, if you will recall last week's lesson, uh, it was also taken from uh, Luke. Uh, we Luke chapter 7. Uh, verses 1 to 10. Uh, the uh, the background for that lesson was uh, Jesus had just completed uh, speaking or actually preaching the Beatitudes uh, in the plains uh, outside of uh, uh, Capernaum. He came into Capernaum and was met by um, uh, Jewish leaders who asked him, who, who beseeched him to come and heal a centurion who was worthy, a uh, centurion's uh, servant. Uh, after that, and we know Jesus uh, was told later not to come into his house because he wasn't worthy, and neither was the centurion worthy to come to him, and he said, well, speak a word, and Jesus really uh, was marveled at his faith and said he had not seen such faith in Israel. Uh, immediately following that, Jesus moved on to a, a small town called Nain, where he saw a funeral procession, procession I should say, and uh, they were proceeding to bury the only son of a widow. Jesus had compassion. He touched the coffin, raised the young man, and restored him to his his mother. And that astonished the people around him, and the, the fame of, of, of that, of him rather, spread widely around the region. And then Jesus was sent questions by, his, by the disciples of John the Baptist about uh, who Jesus was, if he was the one that they were expecting, and if not, and then Jesus, of course, responded to them by telling them to go back and tell John what uh, they had seen and what they had heard. And then he goes on to praise John, saying that uh, uh, there was not one born of woman that was greater than John. And uh, and that leads us up to 
uh, today's where we pick up uh, the narrative uh, and today's lesson. Uh, Jesus had been invited to the home of a Pharisee to dinner, and he accepted the invitation. Uh, not sure, we're not sure why he was invited. Perhaps the Pharisee uh, had some honest uh, questions for Jesus, or perhaps he intended to uh, try and entrap him in his words. We know that that was pretty characteristic of the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests to try and entrap him and try and defame him. Uh, but we're not sure what the motive was for inviting Jesus, but he accepted the invitation. And Jesus had already said uh, just prior to where our lesson text picks up that uh, he was called uh, a friend of sinners uh, and a wine bimmer, a bibber rather, a friend of publicans and sinners. And so we, we're going to see in our lesson text today how the uh, the Pharisee who invites him uh, had uh, some uh, some thoughts that Jesus obviously was able to discern and uh, comment on uh, that were certainly uh, uh, pretentious. Uh, we're going to read our lesson text now, and then we'll get into a verse by verse discussion. So, beginning at verse one, now when he had ended all. I'm sorry, I've gone back to our previous uh, lesson text for a minute, beginning at verse 37, chapter 7, verse 37. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, or sat at dinner, or a meal in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with her tears and to wipe them with the hairs of her head and kiss his feet and anointed them with the ointment now the pharisee which had bidden him saw it and spake within himself saying this man if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him for she is a sinner and jesus answering said unto him simon i have somewhat to say unto thee and he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave both them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most and he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou, gave, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And our key verse is verse 38, and we'll read that again. She stood at his feet behind him and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now, in the way of just a little more background, um, when uh, a dignitary or Pharisee uh, gave a banquet, um, it was uh, not exclusive it was not exclusively private especially if he held it in a courtyard uh, where uh, pu the public could uh, could actually stand around and be spectators and hear what was being said and this was uh, the case especially if a famous person a, a rabbi or something was invited uh, to dinner and uh, so there were 
people, members of the public that were no doubt standing around uh, this uh, this banquet that uh, this Pharisee uh, was holding for Jesus. And uh, uh, so the, the, the woman that that's, we're going to be uh, learning about in just a minute or reading about in just a minute uh, was not uh, altogether out of place, uh, even though she was and that she was a known sinner. And, uh, and so there was some... Uh, there was probably some trepidation on her part with, with approaching Jesus in this setting. So let's just pick up at verse 37. And behold, a woman of the city, and she's not named here. Uh, there's a parallel passage uh, in uh, Matthew 26 and Mark 14, where a woman named Mary is named, and she also brings an alabaster baster box of ointment and anoints Jesus' head. But uh, uh, not to be confused with that incident, this woman is not named. She is a woman of the city, and that suggests something right there. Uh, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. And alabaster uh, boxes or jars were commonly used to hold precious uh, ointments uh, and ointments were of uh, significant value. We read about that in the parallel in the other passages where in Mark uh, 14 verses 3 to 5, for example, uh, we're told what the value of the alabaster box that Mary broke and anointed Jesus with was. It was actually over uh, a year's uh, worth of pay. It was worth over a year's worth of pay. And, of course, she was criticized for the waste by Judas Iscariot. And, of course, Jesus said, why, you know, why are you uh, criticizing this woman? Because she's anointed me for my burial. You remember that passage. And that was in Bethany, by the way. That was not in Capernaum, not in Galilee, part of Galilee. All right, now, so um, she brings this expensive ointment. Uh, and she... Uh, uh, we, we're going to see in a minute what she does with it. Verse 38a, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. Now, as uh, as we most of us know, the uh, the manner of dining uh, back in uh, those days was to to uh, recline or actually to be inclined on one side, actually supported by a shoulder. And there were very low tables where the food was, uh, and actually the uh, the invited guests actually uh, were inclined or lying on their shoulders and inclined uh, around this table. And so she's standing initially behind him and at his feet. The feet are kind of pointed out away from the table, and uh, she is weeping. Uh, We don't know why she's weeping, but obviously she's in some type of emotional distress, uh, most likely over her sinful condition. We don't know that for sure, but it stands to reason that she's approached Jesus, she's heard of Jesus, she recognizes him as a holy man of God, and she is weeping because of her sinful condition. we, We know if the Pharisee knows she's a sinful woman, everyone else there in the crowd does. And so um, that's that may be one of the reasons. Verse 38b, or part b of 38, says, And began to wash his feet with tears. Now this woman is really wailing. She is crying profusely. And the tears are just flowing. Uh, and uh, she is she's beginning to wash the, the dust and so forth off Jesus' feet with those tears in part c of 38 says and did wipe them with the hairs of her head now by this time she's stooped down uh on her knees and she's she's uh she's low enough to not only uh uh allow the tears to fall directly on his feet but to wipe them with the hairs of her head and then part d of 38 says and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment I want to say something uh, before we move on to the next verse, uh, and Jesus is going to point this out. Uh, what the the the, uh, the master of the house, the one that invited him, 
uh, neglected to do was something that was relegated to uh, the lowest person in the house, a slave. So she's, this woman is really performing an act of great humility, and she's not doing it uh, uh, being uh, to pretend to be humble. Uh, she's being genuinely contrite and humble uh, and really showing her affection and adoration for Jesus and what she's doing in washing his feet with her tears. And, of course, she's being extravagant in uh, anointing them with this very valuable ointment. Now, again, he recognizes her as a sinner, so she is apparently a notorious sinner. She's known for uh, perhaps prostitution or being an adulteress, uh, but uh, it's something that, uh, again, uh, the public knows in general knows about. But we can't really speculate as to what kind of sinner she is because we really don't know. The text does not tell us that. But the main point is um, the Pharisee has sized Jesus up and uh, said within himself, this man is really no real prophet or he would know uh, what kind of woman this is. And furthermore, he would not let her touch him because she is a sinner. Again, if we back up to uh, verse 34 of the same chapter, Jesus uh, proclaims himself to be a friend of, uh, he uh, has a reputation of being a friend of publicans and sinners. Uh, and so he would know that Jesus is not disputing the fact that, hey, he associates with them. In fact, on one occasion, when he was asked by a Pharisee why he associated with them, why he ate with them, he said, they that are whole don't need a physician. He came to call, he did not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. Verse 40, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. Now we learn that the, the Pharisee's name is Simon. And Jesus actually uh, puts him on notice. Hey, you know, I got something to, to talk to you about. And, uh. Obviously, Simon, the, this is a different Simon uh, other than the one in the, the similar passage. That Simon was a leper, and he had a banquet in his house, and he had apparently been healed by Jesus and certainly was more humble than this Pharisee was. Okay, now, the uh, what verse 41 says... There was a certain creditor uh, that which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. Now, uh, this the, the, the creditor was a lender, someone who loaned money, and he had two problem debtors. You know, he had a uh, problem collecting from them. One of them owed him owed 500 pence, a pence. Is plural for penny, and a penny in that day was the value of a day's labor, common laborers' uh, worth of uh, their pay, rather, in a day. So 500 pence represented 500 days of labor. That's a year and a half of labor. The other owed 50 pence, or something representing 50 days of labor, about a month and a half, uh, and this is a parable, of course, intended to make a point with this Pharisee. Verse 42, A says, and when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. And we see other instances where uh, we see this kind of forgiveness and what the forgiver expects uh, when they are forgiven debt. Uh, and we see uh, Jesus is going to uh, make a point of what should have been done and uh, in, 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 in relative terms here. Uh, part B says, tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Which of them will love the creditor or the, uh, the uh, most? And Simon, verse 43 says, Simon answers and said, I suppose he to whom he forgave most. And he said, this is Jesus said unto him, thou hast rightly judged. Simon recognizes that greater forgiveness inspires greater love. 
um, you know, he may not uh, see a need uh, for forgiveness himself, uh, and he may not recognize that he is being rebuked by Jesus for his evil thinking, for him assessing not only Jesus as not being a prophet, but also making a a real clear distinction between himself, self-righteous as he is, and the sinful woman, not recognizing that he's also a sinner, uh, and indeed, in God's eyes, you know, worthy of the same punishment that the woman is, if he, unless he repents. Part B of verse 44 says, I entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Now, it was customary in that day for uh, the guest to be afforded a washing of his feet when he entered uh, the host's house. And that washing was to be done by a servant uh, or a slave. And the lowest servant, uh, the job usually fell to the lowest servant in the house. Uh, and it was because of the, the conditions of the day, they wore sandals and it was easy to get the, you know, their feet dirty and dust on their feet. And the fact that they um, reclined at the meal, uh, that was really good to have clean feet. We know that Jesus washed his disciples' feet during the meal, during the Last Supper. Uh, so this is something that he is pointing out uh, uh, to the self-righteous Pharisee that he neglected to do, which was, again, a very important custom of that day. Verse 45 reads, Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Now, what is he doing here? He is contrasting what Simon neglected to do with what the woman did. Uh, and not of, out of compulsion, not because she was required to do this, but we'll find, we'll talk in a minute about what her motivation was. And uh, so he is saying, you know, another, he's citing another custom of that day, and that was to give a, a kiss of affection to show that you appreciated the person. Uh, it was to show, so they showed a measure of affection in doing that. Uh, even today, you know, it's customary to greet with a kiss. Um, and uh, on the cheek. And, and of course, this woman is showing affection. And, and, and certainly, according to the custom, perhaps in an inappropriate way. But she wasn't concerned about that. You know, she already had a reputation as being a sinner. She was, she was crying all over his feet. And she was kissing his feet. And she was uh, anointing his feet with oil. Which was something, again, that was against the mores of that day. But, again... She did not care. She was uh, shameless in, in showing her affection and her loyalty and her submission to, to the Lord. Again, doing this very humble act, uh, one that was relegated to the lowest slave, uh, and, and, and again, not from compulsion, but began, but genuine humility and devotion. Verse, uh, verse 46. My head with oil thou didst anoint or didst, didst not anoint but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment now for special guests it was the custom of that day to anoint the head uh, of the guests with oil and perhaps a fragrant oil uh, this might have been for you know priest or some special dignitary that was coming to the house of someone, again, even a rabbi. Uh, but uh, uh, it was not done customarily for all guests. But this woman has afforded, she's gone beyond what was customary, the common customary greeting to something that was extravagant. And she's uh, anointed his feet with this precious and costly ointment. And no doubt it's very fragrant as well. Remember in the other passage where Mary, uh, and this most likely was Mary, the sister of Lazarus, anointed his feet, or no, his head rather. The house was filled with the fragrance. So uh, no doubt the house is filled with this, this great fragrance. So again, you know, while, while Simon had, you know, 
just written this woman off as a sinner that shouldn't be associated with. Jesus is pointing out some things that she did that were a customary greeting and thoughtful greeting that Simon neglected to do. Um, let's move on to verse 47. Wherefore, or therefore, I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but whom, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Now, what is Jesus demonstrating in this verse? Number one, uh, he's demonstrating that he certainly does know what kind of woman this is. He said, her sins, which are many. He knows about each and every one, which is far more than Simon does. And he proclaims that they are forgiven. They are washed away, just as ours are because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Now, he's speaking about uh, her sins being forgiven and paid for uh, by his sacrifice to come on the cross, the same way that ours have been forgiven uh, by the sacrifice that he made as we look back at the cross. And he said she loved much. She's showing her love for him. And and what inspired that love? Uh, the, the the forgiveness that she was seeking uh, the um, uh, the from him. Uh, she recognized again that this was uh, a man of God. Whether she recognized him as being the God himself, we're not sure. But certainly she recognized him to be a man of God who could remit, remove her sins. And so she is uh, adoring him and loving him for that. And of course, Jesus rewards that that love and that loyalty uh, by pronouncing her to be forgiven. And he goes further to say, but, and this is a backhanded way of uh, commenting on uh, Simon. He doesn't realize it, of course, but he said, to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth much. What, what's he, you know, what does he mean by that? Well, Simon, as was typical of the Pharisees, thought themselves to be righteous. They were self-righteous. They thought that salvation could be earned by keeping the law. And they were strict adherence to the law insofar as they could be. But they were hypocrites. They were pretending to be righteous when they weren't. You remember uh, Jesus talked about the, the long prayers that were made for the widows in the marketplace while secretly they were devouring or foreclosing on widows' houses. So they did a lot for pretense. They did a lot to appear to be righteous when they really weren't. And of course, their hearts, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, of the mouth speaketh. And, and of course, uh, the issues of life come from the heart. And that's why he tells us to guard our hearts. So even if, if outwardly they seem to keep all the law, we know that if, if they had vile and evil hearts, then that was just as sinful as committing sinful acts. And he is, you know, again, Simon doesn't think he needs any forgiveness of God. So you know, if, he, if you don't recognize you are a sinner, you're never going to recognize that you need forgiveness for your sins. And that's that speaks to so many um, of our generation. Uh, there's, a, there's a man that comes to mind uh, that I've tried on occasion to speak to about the Lord and he doesn't want to hear, you know, and he has uh, been truly blessed. In fact, came very near death a few years ago. And I thought certainly that will uh, open his eyes and, uh, and and help him to realize that the, the number of breaths and heartbeats remaining for him in this world are numbered, you know. But he's still uh, as adamant about not uh, uh, not coming to faith. And I understand his son is a, is a minister, uh, which is just astounding. Uh, so uh, I know the, the Bible tells us not to cast our our pearls before swine and so we can only do so much without causing someone to blaspheme and to make their situation worse so i pray for him and and i'll continue to pray for him and for his salvation and as god uh, opens the door offers opportunity uh, i will uh, i will share with him uh, in so in so much as he is willing to hear uh, the uh, the faith and uh, what he needs to do to be saved 
So what does it say to us? I mean, we we need to be extravagant in our worship, extravagant in our in our giving and our in our praise of the Lord, and we will be uh, the more fully we recognize what He's done for us. The sins when I think about all the sins that God forgave me of, that the Lord Jesus forgave me of, and that His blood washed away. It, it's 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 it can be overwhelming, you know. Uh, evil thoughts and actions and, and and words, you know. And and so, the more we recognize what He's done for us, the more grateful we should be. And then finally, uh, verse forty-eight says, "And He said unto her, He turns to her now. He turns away from Simon. He's directed his attention to Simon and said, This woman's sin is forgiven.' He said, "Thy sins are forgiven." So he pronounces her sins forgiven. He's completely cleansed her of her sins. And again, this is looking forward to the payment that he's going to make for those sins. But in effect, she, she was saved then, just as all the Old Testament saints were looking forward to the sacrifice that Jesus would make. Now, if you read further, if you read all the background uh, text, you know that in the next verse, uh, the others that are there, no doubt Pharisees as well, start to murmur, who is this man think he is that can forgive sins? And we know Jesus was confronted uh, elsewhere with that question, who is he think he is, he can forgive sins? And he said, he, he actually responded then, you know, which is easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk. And he tells the man, the lame man to rise up and walk. Well, in this case, he just ignores it. And, uh, you know, and, and the, the, the they will need to, to deal with in their own consciences who Jesus is. So I think the takeaway again for, for us today is to recognize that uh, we need to be really uh, extravagant in our worship, uh, extravagant in our, our, our devotion. We need to be genuinely uh, humble before the Lord, and we need to, uh, uh, to love him uh, but because he has loved us so much, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And may God, um, hopefully God has given us a greater understanding of this passage, and we pray that God would bless you and keep you in his care.